And got it. Got it. Hi, everybody. Oh, and I should probably start the closed captioning. Yeah, I never captions. Show captions. Okay. Right on. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Chaos Community Call. Uh, minutes are in the chat. And today's critical question is if you can ride a skateboard and or roller skate. And I think we've decided that it means roller skate, not roller blade. So <laughs> the two are very different. <laughs> Has anybody ever uh, skateboarded like in a skate park? Like, you know, with like the cement and all that kind of stuff? No, I've never done that. Just down the street. Yeah, I've never done that. Kevin, you're I'm saying no Tony Hawk. I'm no Tony Hawk, Matt. When I'm I was like when you. I was when I was younger and uh maybe 70 pounds lighter. Uh, that was the much, thing. Much, much younger. Yeah. Did you go to Roberts? Uh, uh I don't know that. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the one by Hive. It's one by the grocery store. Anyway. Oh no, yeah, that probably wasn't uh I Didn't doubt that exist. was around when I yeah. Okay. Uh, well, okay. These are always great questions to learn about people. Um, so I thought we'd use a little bit of time to just kind of give some updates for folks that, you know, don't necessarily attend all of the meetings and can maybe ask questions about kind of what's going on in some of the meetings. Um, so I'll just, I'll kind of give the updates as we go through. Um, feel free to, to kind of add updates as you would like on some of the work that you're doing or add anything um, that you'd like to to this conversation. So in common this last week, uh, we did have a conversation to try to establish that just that common wasn't a place where all things go. <laughs> like if it's <laughs> when in doubt, give it to the common working group. Um, so just kind of working on establishing what we work on and what and what we don't work on. Um, Kevin, do you want to give an update on that comment at all? Do you remember this conversation? Uh, yes. And uh, so part of this is also about the, uh, the project management group. So the, the, we have a, a new group of, uh, of that's uh, starting to meet uh, to, uh, to help manage the, uh, the individual projects that we have. So uh, some of the, some of the kind of community wide things that common would be would have been kind of interested in or uh, kind of worked on prior some of those things are going to be kind of taken over by the project managers and the project management group itself so uh so to that end we we, we kind of we just kind of talk about what the scope of our group was uh and what we'd like it to be and i think we we kind of landed on a place where we'd like to we'd really like to focus on uh kind of metrics definition and working with models and kind of being a uh, working group that uh, adds an element of uh, validity and rigor to the uh, metrics and metrics models work, but also to, to kind of act as a liaison between the context groups and the, the models groups and uh, kind of the metrics definition, so. Great. Uh... Well said, Sophia. I'm getting some feedback on yours right now. Can I mute you? There, right on. Um, right. Well said, Kevin. Thank you. And I, I think the biggest thing is, as you pointed out, just kind of having these the project management group take over the management of some of the maybe smaller pieces of software, or think about even just the the website kind of stuff. Um, that was that did have a tendency of kind of coming to common, and. Hey Sean, that's you listening to music. That was that was kind of awesome. Oh, uh, that's that, that actually came through on the microphone. That's hilarious. Uh, it sure did. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's just my task timer seeing that I'd completed the task I was working on. But um, it's only it's not supposed to be able to be heard by others, but apparently it is. It's a it was a task congratulator. Good job. <laughs> you should do that every time you want to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so to that end, we had, uh, I just kind of give you an update. We did have a couple metrics um, that we were talking about. So self-merge rate 
is one metric that was published. This was one that Ray Paik had brought up and we had discussed for quite a while. I'm just trying to understand how many um, merges are occurring by somebody who actually starts the PR. So just kind of merging your own work. It was kind of ironic because in this whole discussion, there were times that there was like one little typo in finishing the metric and Elizabeth just wanted to self-merge it, which <laughs> would have been, of course, extremely ironic on this metric. So she, yeah. oh. <laughs> she didn't. <laughs> Um, another one that we're working on, so you can take a look at it there. Another one that we are working on, we won't look at it here, but it's second time contributors. This is a metric that has been kind of asked for, I feel like for years, um, or it has at least come up for years, just kind of as an indicator of retention for contributors. So if you see, you know, kind of those first time uh, contributors, that's great. But how many of those are second time contributors? And that's really what this metric is focused on. Um, so Sean is, has kind of put together a template there. Feel free to take a look at it. Um, but this is what we're working on in common. And I would suspect, you know, in two weeks when we meet again, we'll probably be spending some time to kind of work on this metric a little bit more. All right. Anything else from common that for the folks that were there that you think I missed or you might want to talk about? All right. Cool. Um, from the context working groups, so again, the context working groups are the working or the context groups are the groups that we have that really focus on putting metrics and metrics models into practice. And the intention of these context groups is to not necessarily have those groups build metrics or metrics models, but just kind of talk openly about what metrics and metrics models would be useful uh, in their particular context. And so we have three, really four with the app ecosystem, but three that I'll talk about today, uh, context working groups, and that's with the university uh, OSPOs or university open source efforts. Uh, we have scientific software, and then we have uh, corporate OSPOs. Um, so with respect to the university in the last meeting, we talked a little bit about um, how we're accommodating other classifications of universities. There is a tendency, I think, in this group to think about kind of those research one or those research intensive universities and how they think about open source, when in fact there may be other types of universities that are also thinking about open source that aren't necessarily research one. So um, as an example, there may be uh, at a research one institution, a heavy focus on taking open source products that are produced in the university and turning them into commercial products through a tech translation process. So a lot of the large universities have processes by which you can actually make money on the things that you produce at a university. A lot of, a lot of universities don't have a process like that. So just as an example, we've been talking a lot about safe tech transfer, but we also need to accommodate um, other things that, that other universities care about as well. Um, and we've been using Boyer's Modes of Scholarship to kind of think through this Boyer's Modes of Scholarship. Um, this is the, just as I want to continue to share, this is the, the kind of the framework that we've been working on in the university setting that we can continue to talk to um, and talk about in those meetings. All right. So that's the update from the university setting. Any questions or comments there? Good. So science has been a slightly different conversation in this context working group or in this context group. Um, there's been discussion about just not really the frameworks, but how we consider um, how health information or information provided from the metrics for metrics models could prove useful within a community. And so we, um, Sean and Don uh, provided kind of a, 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 a sample overview of some communities that we shared with community managers. Uh, and they're using a narrative around some of those metrics as to what is being seen on those. Do you remember the old um, uh, community health reports that we would provide in chaos? It was like a, a, a service that we were gonna provide. Anybody remember that? No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. Those reports. Yeah. Yeah. 
Vinod, I think you were kind of in charge of coordinating those. We didn't have a lot of requests on those, but this is kind of similar to that, that we were providing a report for one particular community here. The, the challenge, I think, in this conversation has been that a lot of, there's an expressed concern about how metrics would be um, used against people within a community or kind of weaponized. And so there seems to be, at least with the folks that we've been talking to, a concern about um, how metrics would be used by community managers within scientific software communities. So we kind of backed off of the framework, things that we're doing in corporate and university contexts. And we're just really kind of starting kind of a little bit earlier in the process and just saying, okay, here's a, a sample report. Let's see how well it's received within your community and if it provides um, good points to talk around within your community. So we're not really building a framework quite yet. We're just trying to build the conversation within science. Um, so do people have questions there? So Matt, uh, yeah. Can you hear yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so uh, like, are we trying to do the similar reports that we did previously or no, how? It's... We probably won't set that up again, okay. but we're just trying to explain kind of what we provided in this one, in this one sample. Okay. You know, it was like, it was like three different, I think we actually did the starter project health metric model, you know what I'm talking about? Right. Yep. So we ran that against a particular community and shared the results with a narrative with those community managers. And then they're going to use that report to kind of open a conversation with within their community and just kind of see what the reaction is to that report. Okay. Okay. Now I get it. Yeah. And they'll come back. So no, you don't have to start up anything. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, do we have to go back and just no, no, no. <laughs> we do not. We do not. Uh, but I think that early work that we had done was really helpful in this regard because it kind of put us in the right spot. If I remember, if I remember correctly, the early yeah. work those were it was a one-page document, and there yeah. were four metrics that we were looking at, uh, but they weren't necessarily related. So it wasn't right. a, it wasn't really a metrics model. It was just kind of four interesting metrics to look at. Correct. So and if you I, recall, half of them were produced by Grimoire Lab, and half were produced by Augur. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I, yes. I like the uh, I like the looking at a a four metric model. Mm -hmm. I like that a little bit more. Uh, yeah, it seems, especially the starter project health metric model seems yeah. like a great a great one in this in this regard. Uh, okay, cool. Well, thank you for that. Um, and then in the corporate OSPO, um, we're looking at, at doing a chaos best practice guide. So trying to, I think Dawn had put this on the agenda, trying to reach out to organizations who are using chaos metrics and just talk about how they've engaged with the metrics and what they've learned in using the metrics. So this is kind of an ongoing process just to learn a little bit more about the metrics in practice. So that's that first one. Um, so if you know of any groups or you yourself are using uh, chaos metrics in practice, reach out to Dawn when she gets back from her vacation, because uh, I know she'd like to, to hear more and share those stories. Uh, we do this link here. We do have a, a chaos panel at Open Source Summit EU, gosh, coming up in two weeks, something like that, shortly. Um, and the panel was just kind of talking about what are some of the questions that could be asked of the panel. So I'm just kind of presenting them here. All right. And then one of the last things we talked about was, again, the OSPO functions, this, this diagram here, um, as well as the to-do book chapter. So I need... I could use a hand in, in writing this. So there, we've had, we have a request from the to-do group to write a book chapter in terms of helping organizations think about metrics and metrics models in their particular context. And mm -hmm. my initial thought was to use kind of this framework as a way to frame the conversation. So saying here are some you know, identified functions within a corporate OSPO, and here's how metrics can inform these, these different areas, particularly these eight boxes down here. 
I don't know what y'all think about a structure like that for a book chapter. I haven't heard negatively towards it, but I, I could use a hand just kind of getting like words yeah. on paper. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, is there a link that you have in the notes there, Matt? I think there is. Um, not here. It's in the, uh, it would be over in the OSPO, uh, the OSPO minutes. Okay. But it's just, you know, it's like writing anything. It just takes a little bit of like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to contribute paper, to it. Do so we have a speak. deadline that we're working with? I haven't been told one, and I haven't <laughs> been asked for updates on this yet. So, okay. so, so nothing, uh, not really nothing's overwhelmingly important. urgent at this time. Mm -mm. But in in writing, so if anybody has an interest in, in helping, thanks, thanks, Sean. Like, too, like oh. writing, for those of you that know, like, it's, when you write, sometimes it's nice to, to come back to the document and see some more words <laughs> just on the document that you haven't written yourself. So it's kind of encouraging. So any support would be much appreciated. So maybe uh, Matt, a question. So like you're, you're thinking on having words around those uh, framework that you showed in the slide that, okay, yeah. maybe write yeah. something on the internal adoption and looking on these different ways and how the metrics can support in yes. the internal adoption around those lines. Yeah, so like in the last OSPO meeting, we had a discussion around what discovery of OSS in the organization can mean and what the limitations are of that of that particular thing. You know what I mean? Right. And so we'd say, you know, these are the, so we'd have to have a section that's saying, here are the four high level functions that we have identified. And within each one of those functions, we have a, a couple goals. That we're trying to achieve okay um and then we would we just have to have a definition you know a paragraph or a little bit less maybe on each one of these boxes defining each one of them okay and then when we come in here like the discovery we would describe what the discovery of oss in the organization is and then kind of leave leave by saying here are a few metrics that can kind of provide insight towards this particular goal okay okay yeah, I'll be happy to help. I'll I'll just look at the document and I'll start contributing. Okay. I don't have a it's not a super well written document at this point, but um, hey, I found a link to the um outline that we'd created, but I can't find a link to a draft of the chapter. Um I'll it it's not in the OSPO working group minutes. I'm looking it should be back. somewhere in there. Yeah, I thought so too the structure of the chapter would honestly just be this structure in a right in a more narrative form so one of the things i'm doing in the ospo working group is kind of at least trying to have a discussion around each one of these boxes in each one of the meetings so that takes us out seven more weeks or 14 weeks which is probably a little too slow Matt, are you looking for both uh, for for writing and editing as well? Yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, I I definitely be interested in helping. Oh, thank you so much. That's really very cool. I really appreciate it. And I don't think you know a lot of these to do book chapters. They're not in you know like crazy long by any means. So I think it we can get it just to the point. That would be really really helpful. So thanks, Nicole. All right, great. Well, that was, that was really, thank you, everybody. Um, appreciate it. And then um, this is a call just for anybody on, on this call or anybody in the chaos project, but we have these frameworks and this is about the extent of my, <laughs> my design skills. And this looks like something I might expect from like somebody who's not very good <laughs> at designing things. <laughs> So if there's if there's anybody who could at least just it has an interest in kind of thinking about how we might present this type of material in a more contemporary way that doesn't look like it's from 1997, I would really appreciate I would really appreciate it. Um, I every now and then I'm like, I'm gonna do this myself, and then I just I can't. I don't know how. 
Because I just put, all, I do, all I do is look at the PowerPoint options of like things they give to me, and they all they're all just like arrows or curvy arrows. So if anybody, I, can, I confess right? I was at first confused by the diagram, but now I kind of it kind of is facilitating discussion reasonably well. It so. yeah, it just it's just ugly. That's all. That's pretty much the end of it. So if anybody would have an interest. I do. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> if you could make this look. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know if I can. I, I don't have like, you know, tip top design skills or anything. So don't, don't be thinking any of that. <laughs> but <laughs> I'd be, I'd be happy to to kind of jam on it with you. Oh, that would be great. Well, Nicole, you have nowhere to go but up from this. So <laughs> <laughs> I can promise you that. Well, <laughs> well, I think this looks like a great outline. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, I don't, yeah, go ahead. I think we should embrace our 90s vintage uh, uh, design elements. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> And Nicole, I don't think it's just so you know, like I don't I don't think it's these slides down below. I really just think it's kind of presenting this first model to people as a way to think about um OSPO functions in the universe or in the university, in this case in the corporate, in the corporate setting, and then what the goals could be. So it's really to kind of just get people's attention right away that these are kind of four areas where we think metrics can play a role in helping you understand um these different functions of the ospo well cool all right well cool. thanks nicole you know how to get a hold of me too so yeah okay yeah this will be fun oh super thank you um okay great uh let's see project managers meeting um i somebody added that so would somebody like to comment to that um hi mark yeah oh, hey. i did add that well, I would like if uh, I don't know if Kevin would like to like take that because um, we did discuss a few things on the call. It was our first meeting, and we wanted to bring to the attention to uh, um, everyone some of the things we we talked about. Hi, Kevin. Would you like to uh, <laughs> take that? Hi. Uh, we so we spent a uh, we spent you, I, I, if you'd like to talk about it, you're you're welcome to. I can say a few things too, though. Uh, I can start if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the so the for the for the first part of the meeting, we really we really had a, a really good discussion on the the role of project managers within chaos, uh, and the the relationship between uh, other individuals uh, working on projects. So we, we kind of talked about what the relationship would be between a a project manager and say a technology lead on a project, uh, and we we uh, we view both of those the individuals uh, as basically uh, maintainer, which is already an already defined position within chaos. So uh, a project manager would take on a maintainer role, and a and a technology lead or a knowledge lead would take on a maintainer role as well, uh, and then the. Uh, uh, on, on our projects and then the uh the relationship between the project manager and those those other positions we really kind of outlined what that would look like uh, so uh additionally we started talking about the uh what projects do exist within chaos uh but and uh and we agreed to uh we're going to keep our project management within GitHub. So we're going to use GitHub tools uh, for project management. And but GitHub does, does have GitHub projects. Yeah, GitHub projects. Yep. Okay. So uh, but yeah, that was a uh, I think that's primarily what we talked about. Uh, Mary Blessing, can you think of anything I missed? Uh, yeah, that's that was pretty much what we talked about. Okay. Um, so again, the intention of the chaos project managers meeting is to identify, like you were alluding to Kevin, all of the different projects that exist within 
chaos. And these are generally the, maybe the, the mm, just things like the newcomer bot or, um, yeah, go ahead, Kevin. We've called them initiatives in the past, okay. right? So generally they're the, uh, uh, there are these these temporary work groups that we put together to to build something, uh, and then some of them do kind of expand more into con continuing operations. Uh, but for the most part, it's the it's these initiatives or projects that uh, are occurring outside of working groups or context groups. Okay. And this is so this meeting. It looks like looking at the minutes can help identify those projects that are maybe. Um, under maintained at the moment, or just have maybe a single maintainer that we might want to have more people associated with. Um, kind of could provide a way for maintainers of these projects to talk with each other about challenges they're having. Um, is there anything else that this this group is trying to provide as well? So we did talk about we talked about uh, we'd we'd like to assign. When we assign project managers, we'd like to put two into each project. So there's always a backup. Yeah. Uh, and then additionally, we, we kind of talked about kind of the almost the voluntary nature of project managers within those uh within these projects. So some of these projects they they already exist. Uh they've been they've been uh kind of humming along all right for a while, and they have they do have people on those projects that are that are working in kind of a project management or community management role. Uh, so the, the the goal of the project management group is not to force these projects to have brand new project managers or, uh, but in the, in the future, when we start projects, we'd like to, we'd, we'd like to uh, start projects with the idea that uh, let's, let's start with, project managers from the beginning. So existing projects, if they would like to uh, add an official project manager or have someone from the project management group come in and help them out, uh, I think I think we talked about kind of letting them decide that rather than, so we're not trying to force sure. project managers on anyone who doesn't want them. Okay. It, it feels like this will provide some nice transparency on the different projects that are occurring within chaos just across the project, the whole chaos project as a whole. And so, much needed much needed assistance for people who are kind of running some of these projects on their own right now. Mm -hmm. So the the badging bot project is the one that, that comes up a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think that Enoch is 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 doing almost all the work in there. It's yeah. just him. Uh so if there if if he would like to add some project management to it to that project, it could probably ease the burden on him. Yeah. Uh, uh, but we, we uh, but the project management group would defer to him in this situation because he's the of he's course. the lead on that project currently. So once again, not trying to force people to uh yeah, yeah. No, this is great. Um and over the weeks this is making good sense. Um the other thing I might ask you to take a look at in these meetings is how and when we might sunset a project. Like, kind of like the technical reports that we talked about last time, like seemed like a good idea at the time. We gave it a go, but I, at one point we just decided this is it's just just asking somebody to maintain somebody. I think in that case it was Vinod without, without any real clear uh, value. Okay. Yeah. Sophia, do you have something? I have a thought. I was just really excited to see a list, which is on the agenda of just all the different things, because I feel like even as someone who attends these meetings regularly, it's we do a lot of little things going on all the time. And I think having a list of that, especially to your point on what should we keep doing <laughs> and maybe reassess, especially if the same people are getting spread too thin because they're now managing multiple things. Um, I, I'm glad that Kevin also said the word initiative because, as I mentioned in chat, the word project is confusing in the context right. of an open source project. I know, I said project, project twice in a sentence. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, it's weird. I don't, and I don't think that like project management has a very specific connotation, so I don't think we can change that. Um, but it might be nice to have another word for it, but I, 
I don't, I know maybe this is my like my background and let's make a new word uh, coming from an analyst research firm, but um, it might, I feel like calling them initiatives, I think would be helpful just to have some clarity that we're not talking about auger or more labs we're talking about. So there's sort of like a chaos initiative versus another defined open source project, which has more meaning to it. Um, but I, yeah, I'd be really excited to see a list of things. And I think would love to have this group come back to this meeting and just sort of give us a state of the, the state of chaos initiatives and maybe where things have been identified as like, maybe we should consider turning this down or I just, I just feel like that's something that the broader group could help with, but I would love to have this particular group that's done all the work, um, lead that conversation and lead the recommendations. But I just think it would just be helpful to have and to see and to see how the rest of the community can either help support where we're losing support or help encourage you to wind it down. So I'm mostly just really excited to see this happening. Thank you to those that have been in this meeting. <laughs> you have something, Kevin, right on? Oh, we've only had one meeting. So this is just the, we're, we're at the very beginning of defining what this group is. Uh, so really just trying to understand uh, the, the scope of this group uh, and, and the relationship between the, the project managers and the, uh, the other uh, incredible people who do chaos work. So, all right, right on. Well, thank you for bringing that forward, Mary Blessing, and that was really nice. And for the updates, uh, Kevin and Mary Blessing. Um, just as a note here, kind of a few notes. Uh, website group, the knowledge base. We're gonna we're meeting again. I I want to say this week, like maybe Thursday morning. Uh, U.S. Central Time uh, to kind of finalize some of the documentation in the knowledge base. There are a few spots that I think are still empty, and it'd just be nice to kind of get that across the finish line. Um, Chaos Cast is restarting. Uh, you've probably heard this already, so if you have an idea for a podcast or if you want to be on a podcast, uh, that's great. I think the best person to let know would be Don, uh, maybe Elizabeth as well. Um, so we have a lot of really nice ideas and a lot of people interested in being in the podcast, but I think we're going to really try to focus on the activities that are occurring in the chaos project, kind of draw those forward and provide meaningful insights uh, for people. We also, we also wanted to do one and Mary Blessing, I think this was an idea that you had in one of our community calls. I want to say it might've been on the OSPO call, but um, we are going to, you know, the Linux Foundation reports that come out, uh, yeah. we are going to ask for a series of panelists to kind of read the report and do a podcast on their reaction to the report. So that was really well received. So thanks for that. All right. Uh, we have 15 minutes left. Sean, I'm going to put you on the spot just a little bit here. So, yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that I think we've been talking about is kind of building a, a community around the development of all available mm -hmm. metrics in Augur. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is something that I think we put out to Slack maybe in early August and you said, let's wait until September. Yeah, <laughs> and now we're, now we're in September, so. Yeah, so do you have thoughts on maybe how you, how you want to go about this or do, are you looking for input? I mean, I think I think right now the the most important thing is to give people a chance to provide input. Like right now, we kind of reviewed, um, some of the other Augur maintainers and I reviewed what, what would be involved in updating our API. Some of it is just now that we have static links, adding those into the documentation um, in place of the ephemeral links that previously existed. And then there are some metrics, probably about 25 to 30 percent of current chaos metrics that aren't exactly in the API the way that um, they would be as chaos metrics. So updating those and then also probably adding some things that Augur provides that are not yet defined as chaos metrics uh, as chaos metrics. And so um, I think I think it begins with um, anybody who wants to kind of go into the API docs and seeing what 
where they can find the links that are good or bad and then just opening an issue uh, to start off while as well kind of as maintainers we try to figure out what's the best way to guide people to create to create new apis we've had a few ideas thrown out so far um, one of the things we were thinking about is a graphql api because they're a little bit more standard to implement and they, they do some things that are nice however they're also more complex to implement than a standard rest api which we already have so right now we're kind of leaning towards just continuing with a standard restful api um, and helping facilitate people adding things to it and um, you know, I'd say first up, go into the API docs and see, you know, whether or not they work or see if um, they point the chaos link that you might see in there. Um, I wrote down the something. three things that I think you were talking about. I don't know if you see yeah, them. I do, yeah, I do, yeah. Updating some of the APIs to include chaos stable links, creating new APIs that, uh, for metrics that aren't currently supported, or new calls. That are currently supported in Augur, is that right? That's right. Yeah. And then documenting some of the existing, some of the existing work in Augur that hasn't been documented as a metric yet. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, do you do you want to have like an Augur community call where you can talk about these things in more detail? Um. You know, I've tried tutorials and Augur community calls a good deal in the past, and I get pretty limited participation in those. And I'm wondering what folks might have in terms of ideas for engaging software developers um, a wee bit more other than uh, calls or tutorials. Um, I, my thought was that maybe with really kind of this this focused direction you know on these particular things that engagement will be a little bit more um, well just focused in terms of contributing to auger and I I'm hoping that might help a little bit as opposed to just auger as a thing you know come and participate in any way that you see fit um were your prior calls? were they did they have this type of focus do you remember they were they were i mean it was we did build an api endpoint in one of them okay um they were focused on whatever questions people who came to them had and so perhaps um one one approach that might work would be to have some uh weekly software office hours where people to just come ask questions about chaos software and I can point them to Grimoire Lab stuff if they have those questions and data science stuff if they have those questions and Augur stuff I can handle. What, um, what would people think about on this call? Um, just simply an Augur an auger call that focuses on API endpoints. That's it. That's, that's what the call is about, to do these three things. Silence means that everybody loves it, is what it means. In this <laughs> Tom, I'm sorry, what, what is the goal? What is the overall goal? I think the goal is to get, you know, try to develop a software community. And that's where I'm like, I'm a little reticent to have it just be a Augur office hours because I'd like to be able to get to sort of view software uh, in chaos more generally, but um, so yeah, as a I have a, uh, maybe like not on specifically on the API, but maybe more on the auger as a 
business model not not in the business model but like how augur evolves like i see bunch of students coming and then once they graduate they are gone and then they stay there or some new other comes but i'm trying to assess like uh, how your uh, strategy is to keep augur evolving that's what my question is like uh yeah, we have over a hundred and fifty contributors to Augur. I mean, there's like four maintainers, and they are all at the University of Missouri right now. But we get regular contributions from lots of different people. So um, I think I think there's a path to maintainership um, challenge. I think a lot of the people that work with Augur are, you know, currently not paid to work with Augur by the companies they work for. So one of the things that you know, I'm working on is to get companies to think about making contributions. I think from a building a maintainer community that um, is outside my local group, I think that is a function of um, trying to get people involved in things like this API thing. And I just, I'm trying to do it and trying to think of ways to do it that will be more effective than like the tutorials. Um, and that we've had before, but, you know, perhaps, perhaps that, um, you know, like Augur office hours every couple of weeks would be a, a good way to get started to, you know, I mean, I'm, okay, I'm certainly okay with, I'm, I'm certainly okay with that. I'm just mm -hmm. trying to think of ways to make it happen, which we haven't tried. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I wonder if it would be helpful if there was a, like a, dedicated community person uh, for software or for for auger just kind of the, with the focus on the focus on building building community because that's uh that's a lot of work and that's the uh you know th these are the same these are the same uh issues we hear from the uh, open source scientific software people in the context group a lot you know it's hard to it's hard to build community around uh university developed uh, open source software projects sometimes so I, i'm wondering if we if we kind of had more dedicated activity towards community development uh, and maybe a dedicated person to that if that would help yeah i mean we certainly um tried that before i mean i think it comes down to there's a different a different thing that happens when you're maintaining software or when you're maintaining metrics and um you know certainly part of our community management has been around the software but we've gotten less traction on that and would you would you be okay sean with maybe trying us maybe a couple calls like we put it out on slack yeah, yeah, of course. It, yeah, it was, yeah. They, I'm willing like, to try the, anything. The focus of this is really just around uh, these API endpoints. That's it, like full yep. stop. And it's around trying to accomplish these three goals. Um, I think it might give people an opportunity to kind of see very specific things that could be worked on in a in a meeting, and in between meetings, and might also introduce people just to Augur more generally. You know, to beyond the APIs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, would you be okay with just kind of thinking about a time that might work for you? Yeah, I mean, You're I doing think, this work um, anyway, so you know. Yep. Just. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, probably some Wednesday time. Yeah. Okay. Is, um, gonna work so yeah i'll look around for a time maybe every week or two okay and maybe like earlier in the day just kind of like all our chaos meetings yeah for sure okay. okay um let's let's see if there's an interest in this i think it just might be a nice nice point of entry for folks with some very specific things to try to accomplish and then to your point about um about supporting other other software projects too, you know, not just Augur. Yeah, because it's. I think it's. Um, it's always a little bit better for for the community. Yep. 
I agree. And I'm wondering like if this goes well, maybe this is something we could pose with Grimoire Lab as well, like, like a, a, a very specific set of things to do that could at least get people engaged with that particular piece of software. I, I agree. I agree. Okay. All right. Um, and Kevin, to your point about a, a dedicated community manager for software, that would be amazing. And that I, did, I did. I mean, Elizabeth purposely is, leave. Works I did to purposely, help. You know. Oh, sorry. I did Elizabeth. purposely leave. Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say I did purposely leave manager off of that uh, off of that statement. Oh. So community community person. Okay. So I don't know what that role would look like. Maybe just a just a little bit of help to uh, do kind of those community building activities uh, to take some of the burden off Sean because I know yeah. he's crazy busy. Yeah, and, and I mean you're you're spot on. I mean community work is hard. Just it just is. Um, okay, well, everybody, uh, we are at the end of time, so I appreciate it. Hopefully, the updates were 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 helpful to you to kind of see what's going on in the chaos project across all the different things we're doing. Uh, have a great oh, and thanks for everybody for contributing and supporting uh, to do things as well. So I really appreciate that. Um, and thanks for all your insight. So have a great Tuesday or whatever you plan on doing today, and we'll see you next time, all right? All right, see you next time. All right. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Bye.